guys. You're uh, tuned in to an episode of Cool Fred's Beamer Tech How To. Um, we're going into episode four or part four, I should say, on this uh, 2013 BMW X5 E70. Um, today we're gonna get into replacing the oil filter housing and the, the belt and the belt tensioners. All right, guys, first thing you want to do is get this battery disconnected here. I've already got it disconnected, but uh, pretty much you don't want to play any games with that. Uh, it's strongly recommended that you that you disconnect that battery. Uh, the reason for that is uh, because, the for one, the area that we're working on, the engine computer is up here. You got lots of uh, power and ground wires, um, and we don't want to accidentally short anything out. I mean, it don't matter how much of a pro you are or how long you've been doing it, uh, you definitely don't want to fry a computer or blow a fuse. Um, and some of these fuses are non-replaceable. You have to replace a whole fuse carrier to get it. Um, next thing I'm going to get into, I got my vacuum cleaner out here. I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna uh, get this micro filter housing off. I'm gonna take all this trim out and I'm gonna vacuum up this stuff and I'm getting my air blower. And uh, I'm gonna blow all these leaves and debris out. Cause pretty much uh, I'm gonna get the air box off and I gotta pull the intake back. And once I do that, I don't want any, um, I don't want any pine straw, debris and stuff like that falling down in the engine. So, all right, guys, I'm back. Um, I'm in the process of uh, getting the rest of these uh, pine straw and dirt and debris out of here. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is uh, there's a lot of pine straw over in this cubby hole here. And the reason I wanted to point that out is same thing over here. I'm going to vacuum as much of this stuff up as possible. Um, this is the driver's side. The passenger side is the most important side that you want to take this note on because uh, this right here is the IBM, the integrated supply module. What that does is that supplies power over to the engine computer um, and also supplies power like for the fuel injection and other things on the engine and possibly for the transmission too. Um, but uh it's a little it's a drain in here um looks like this drain might have been knocked out which is okay because what you want what you don't want is water to collect up in this area here because if water collects up in here uh it can get into the ivm the supply module here and it can basically corrode the relays and everything in there and uh you could be going down the road on a rainy day and your vehicle may just shut off or won't start. So be mindful of uh, keeping this area clean. Uh, if you see water starting to put, uh, pile up in here, basically this right here is the adapter to the micro filter housing, which basically sits in here. And uh, it's a little push pin here. So basically you unclip it from in here. Um, and you can get to the leaves and debris. Like, that's up under these tread panels. Uh, it's just a couple 13s. Uh, they basically, uh, like a half lock turn or a qu quarter turn to unlock those. You get those unlocked. You can pull that up and pull this, uh, the micro filter housing cover off, which is this guy right here. This is the micro filter housing cover. These are the micro filters for the AC system. So uh, you can pull that out, man. If you see any pine straw or stuff in there, you can get that out. Now, the the I believe the only engine that's um, variant that this affects is the vehicles that have the N55 on the E70. So if you have the N55, you will have all this wiring and the supply module down here. You just want to make sure that don't get wet. So I'm going to finish. Go ahead and get this cleaned up. Pine straw out of the way. Um, I'm going to remove this trim panel here 
Only things in there was a couple 10 millimeters. I already got those out. We got two T25s. So remove these center panels and stuff like that out. And be careful with these trims because they are flimsy and they will break. These right here seem like they're holding up pretty good. But uh, a lot of times you'll see these uh, crumbling apart and things like that. So I'll get that done. Then that way I can get down to what I need to get to. All right, guys. What I'm about to do next is um, I'm going to pull off this um, this the, the charger pipe. Going to the turbo charger. Now, I've already, I've already loosened this clamp right here and uh, disconnect the boost pressure sensor right there. Um, what I like to do with this clip right here is I like to grab a a screwdriver or, or what is in this case a this is a pocket screwdriver I got here but I like to grab a a hook tool or something what I'm not what I normally do is I like to just gently just unclip this clip kind of get it out take it out by hand because uh I just take it out like so because a lot of times what end up happening uh when these vehicles get higher mileage on them. This uh, charge air pipe sometimes, the, they, they tend to want to break right there. And I just kind of just gently will slide it off. And then uh, I'm gonna work it off right here. Just gotta set this over here for a hot second. All right, a little tricky to see. But uh, I basically just gotta wiggle this charger. Just wiggle it out. Kind of get it down there and fish it out. And there it is. So, yeah, basically, this area right here, you wanna be careful of because um, sometimes leaving that, that spring clip in there can cause it to break. And also, when going back on, you just want to just uh, gently put it back on. I'm going to set it out of the way and to the side. All right, next up. This is the oil pressure switch. I mentioned on the oil pressure switch that I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna replace that oil pressure switch. Basically, it's a 24 millimeter wrench. And uh, you just, this thread is out. The reason for me replacing them or replacing it is because they're uh, pretty much prone to leakage. Uh, this one right here is all right for the time being, but they 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 typically leak through the sensor pins, and it can just cause a real nasty oil leak right in there. All right, here's our new oil pressure switch right here. Um, pretty much, uh, it had a little O-ring there, but the O-ring was a little loose. It was a rubber O-ring. So what I did, I got some, I got some Vaseline and kind of put it right there so to hold that in place so it won't slip out. So, uh, let me get on over here and thread our uh, new oil pressure switch in. And then we're gonna tighten them down with the 24 millimeter. All right, so that's in there. Nice and tight. All right, what's next? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start to get the intake uh, uh, loose. Got these bolts right here. Um, a lot of the stuff you can kind of leave connected. A lot of times what I do just to kind of get this out of the way, I'm gonna go over here and I disconnect this connection right here that's going uh, 
it's like the power supply that's going to the DME. So, this, uh, let me see here. I don't think it's, yeah, both of these connectors. And they take a little bit of force to get them out. We need pretty much like two hands to just to unlock the lock and kind of pull up on them. But you still want to be gentle because you don't want to don't want to break those clips and get off over here. Alright, here we go. So I'm basically going to take this guy and just swing him over here. I usually just kind of just tuck it off over there, just off to the side. And then uh, this connector here, the third connector on the DME. Now, mind you guys, I do have the battery disconnected. Uh, this is one reason why I recommend strongly disconnecting the battery, where if you do have to disconnect the connection at the, the DME, which is the engine computer, that you can do so without causing any issues. Pretty much that's out of the way. Here from here, you just do a fear connection. Now this little foam insulating piece here, I normally just I'll take that and just fold it back. And uh and uh I'll disconnect this uh, fuel pressure. This is the high pressure rail sensor back here. Get that bad boy disconnected. Now this right here, this little, I pretty much leave that stuff connected because I only need to go back just a little bit with it. I got the, um, I'm gonna leave the tank vent valve on. This is the connection where it goes to the car. So as long as that's a little bit loose, um, I'll be good. In some cases, I'll take a, I'll take my panel popper and um, get that loose, and then we'll be ready to boogie. Get this in take off. All right, guys, um, I was going to talk about a few things um, before we move on to get the intake manifold removed. Um, this is the oil filter housing here, and this is the, the oil cooler. And uh, that's pretty much our leak at the oil filter housing. It's not at its worst stage yet, but it is, uh, you know, kind of starting to get there. As it starts leaking, you can get oil kind of leaking or caking up on the all on the front side of your engine. Uh, a lot of times these valve covers will leak also. The valve cover gas will leak. This one right here like this in pretty good shape. I lift all around the perimeter and everything and it's good. So um, uh, but pretty much what I was gonna talk about, uh, pretty much uh, I showed you guys the other day in uh, our previous video, showed you guys, you know, I, uh, that I got a new coolant hose, upper radiator hose. The reason why, the reason why is you can tell this one here is a little brownish. And when they start, when the, when the, when the plastic goes from black to brown, uh, it's a, a sign of stress that is, you know, getting overheat. And sometimes these things, you can kind of tell it's got a little bit of brownish material here. So this plastic can get weak around this room and, this hose can fail. It can shoot off, pop off, and start leaking. But the other main reason is uh, when you got things like your oil, a little like the, the oil cooler might have been leaking on here for a while, but when you get things that are leaking over a period of time, what happens is that oil starts to eat around this rubber. And you can tell this hose has already started to swell to where this rubber is like uh, starting to eat. Like I can, I can, 
I can probably put a screwdriver through there and pick that rubber out of there. So that rubber's already started to deteriorate. And then another thing is, um, you wanna be mindful of your belts as well. Well, these belts are worn uh, pretty bad. So we're gonna put um, belt, belt tensioner and replace um, this detensioner. We're gonna place that, this uh, idler pulley and this deflection pulley. All three of those pulleys are gonna get, well, these two pulleys and this belt tension gonna get replaced. And we're gonna put a, um, a new belt on there. I'm gonna slide the belt off of that pulley right there. And I'm just gonna go on and remove it out of the way. Pretty much the reason I'm moving it out of the way. You can hear that noise right there. Pretty much what happens with these is the, the, the spring just over time just gets weak. Get that a little bit too soon. Take the tension off. All right, so. so it goes around there. This vehicle has a power steering pump because it's one of the the older platforms before they started switching over to electric power steering. So they put this N55 engine in a variety of vehicles, by the way. So. Uh, the belt drives um, are a little bit different setup, but they generally they'll share a couple of pulleys. So, got that out of the way. But generally, if I'm doing any like an oil filter or oil leak, I probably will remove the belt. If I don't remove the belt, I'm gonna get um, a paper towel or a, a pig mat or something and kind of put over over the area there. So. Um, while I'm cleaning out the oil and everything, I'm not getting the oil on the belts. So, another thing I had over here, I just kind of had this like bungee strapped out of the way. These are the AC lines going to the AC compressor. They kind of just make it a little easy to get the fan out. So, I got the fan out a little bit beforehand. I got it sitting over here on the side here. That's the electric fan. Um, Basically, how you take that out is a couple clips, and then over there, that little the side right here kind of uh, that flips over. And you got a couple of areas where it snaps into. But one thing you want to, uh, on these X5s and X6s, you definitely want to be careful with removing the fan because this is actually one of the tabs you press right here to get the fan out. There's one on both sides down here. So you'll basically take a, a screwdriver and kind of gently lift up on one side at a time. Make sure you don't grab the blades to the fan because if you do that, you can you can uh, you can break the fan. That fan is very delicate and it's also very expensive too. Um, I'm sure there are some some aftermarket ones out there, but uh, a factory fan is pretty expensive. So that's another thing um, you guys want to be mindful about working on these cars uh, especially if you're doing it on your own or if you've never uh, done it before is you just want to um, kind of take your time on some of these things because some of the plastics the hoses and clips I mean they're just things that just easy to break um, so if you kind of just slow down and, and be gentle um, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of used to it so i'm able to kind of move at a decent pace and still um, still relatively rel relatively be efficient um so i'm ready to pretty much get the, the intake back another thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna grab my oil filter uh wrench i'm gonna loosen this filter what that's gonna do that's gonna let the oil drain down in the engine some um, that way, when I remove the oil filter housing, I don't have oil going everywhere. And also, what I'm going to do, I got my drain pan under there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect this, this upper radiator hose and just let that coolant drain on down. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get that intake back. All right, I'm back. Um, so far, what I've done, I got this upper, got the upper radiator hose disconnected. Um from the oil filter housing and the radiator. Uh, so pretty much um, 
after we remove this oil cooler, it's a uh, it's two bolts on the top and one right here in the middle. And then for the oil filter housing itself, you got one. Um, it's one here. The one right here, this is why we got to move the intake. It's a little tricky to see, but it's down there. That's two. And then three is uh, right here. Right there. So we'll get, the, get them three out of there. Um... I was working on trying to get this hose disconnected. Uh, pretty much where it goes, it's got another connection down here. Um, let me see, zoom in a little bit. Uh, okay, yeah, right down there is where it goes. The camera focus, yeah, there it is. So it's a connection right there. I've already moved the little clip. Uh, if you don't know these, these holes are real uh, easy to get out. Basically, you just take a screwdriver, put it in there, and then clip this clip. It's a little, like right there at the little opener. And pull that clip out. Let me clean my hands up. I've already, this uh, oil filter wrench right here, already removed, um, got this loose. Pretty much, uh, I just wanted to, to loosen that. That's gonna let, uh, that's gonna let that oil drain down in the housing back to the engine. That way, when we remove the house, when we remove this oil for the housing, we don't have oil just gush out everywhere. And uh, next up, ready to move. I believe we got um, so we got two, four, six. We got seven bolts on this intake manifold here. Um, I'm, I'm back here at the very last one in the back. Um, on the E70, the X5, when, uh, when you're working on these way back in the back there, um, real simple, real easy to get in, in here versus some of the cars. So, and I've got them on a, a magnetic socket. That's the 11 millimeter nut so I'm gonna get those all let me get those out of there and then I'll sometimes you might get a nut that won't might not I'm gonna come all the way off even with the magnetic socket. But I'm gonna go ahead and get all those, uh, the rest of those remaining. I believe I got another five on there. Um, get those out of there, get the intake back, and we'll go from there. All right, when uh, all those bolts were out of the intake, uh, bolts and nuts, you got uh, two nut, two bolts rather toward the front. And then the rest of the rest of the I think the remaining five or or, or some eleven millimeter nuts. And uh basically all you gotta do is uh jiggle and wiggle on it a little bit. And uh it'll pretty much just uh, slide off of there. I think I'm gonna have to adjust the uh, back here in the back this one. Harness wires. So I'm about to adjust that and then it'll slide on slide right on off. Actually, uh guys, what's holding this up is uh there's a ground wire over here on the cylinder head right there. So uh I'm gonna get that 10 millimeter nut out of the bolt out of there and uh it should slide on back from there. Alrighty. Yeah, that's what it turned out to be, the ground bolt in the back for this ground wire here. Uh, under no circumstances, uh, don't forget to put that uh, ground cable back and tighten that 10, mini, that 10 millimeter bolt over there or else the vehicle not gonna start.
I just got a few things to loosen. Um, it's actually back far enough for me to access that boat, but I'm gonna get my little popper, get that out of there. That way I can swing it out just a little bit more. And like I say on this one, I am gonna be replacing the intake manifold gaskets while I'm in here. Uh, just so I don't have any further issues. A lot of times um, they are a little thick, thicker, and if they kind of still have a little bit of material on them that you can see, they're usually okay. A lot of times you can't reuse them, but I like I like um, I don't like to take any chances. So I'm gonna replace those intake manifold gaskets while I have the intake back and uh, go from there. All right, guys. Uh, the intake is up and back. Well, up and out, I should say. Uh, what I've done is just uh, just kind of taking a bungee strap and just kind of tied it around the the lower end of the wiper blade to kind of just kind of support and secure it. Uh, I've put the intake manifold gaskets in there while I got it right there. Just um, basically, just kind of just just kind of feed them in. They can be a little finicky, so you just gotta kind of just go around and gently uh, press them in. Make sure they're in good. They kind of have like some little notches in there to kind of to secure them and lock them in. So as you push them in. Uh, it, it actually takes a little bit of force to pull it back out. All right, so next up, I'm going to take this oil cooler off. I've screwed the oil filter cap back on with uh, my wrench. I mean, the oil filter cap wrench. Um, just to make sure that when I take it off, you know, most of the oil drained down is what, what I wanted to do. This is that, uh, that boat that's actually in this area here. That's why you pretty much got to get the intake back. Um, you don't have to move it that far back. Uh, I just wanted to get it up out of the way. Uh, a lot of times you can, you can just kind of just, just you would just pull it back and just slide it back just a little bit, just enough to, uh, you know, access that boat. But um, I knew, I just wanted to get it back out of the way that way I got all the room I need to work. And plus I was going to replace the, Intake manifold gaskets anyway, because this thing has got 119,000 miles on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the, the cooler loose and go ahead and work that loose and show you guys the gaskets. And uh, after that, we'll get those things replaced. All right, what I'm doing now is uh, I'm just basically getting these remaining bolts out. cooler all right i got a drain pan up under the car so basically i'm just gonna let this down in here and just let it um um there we go so mostly cooling drained out anyway. But uh, this is the oil cooler. I guess they call it a, a coolant to oil heat exchanger or whatever they want to call it. Uh, just laying it down in there. Make sure this ain't. Make sure it's catching my pan down through there. Make sure the cooling's not going on the floor. All right, so we got that, and you kind of you kind of see, uh, you kind of see right here where the the oil's been kind of leaking there for a while between the cooler and the the housing. Um, I guess one cool fact about this thing, you know, there's a gasket between the cylinder head and the oil filter housing, and basically oil flows through here and also is cooled by the coolant, so. It's kind of like a dual purpose, but the thing is, if those gaskets go out, you get you can get oil that mixed with the coolant, 
and vice versa. All right, this right here is the gasket between the cooler, the cooler housing and the cooler. So, got it in my little pan there. Then you can proceed to move these three bolts right here. Put these over here, my little parts tray here. And then we got this guy down here at the bottom. It's an E10. All three of those bolts are E10. The ones on the cooler are actually an E12. So basically, you just just work it off. Got that bad boy out there. I pretty much try, try to. I got my magnetic tray here, keeping. Uh, Keeping up with all my my nuts and bolts there. Uh, you want to try your best not to drop anything down in the engine compartment. So far, I've been lucky today, so uh, that's good. So I'm gonna get this get this bad boy all cleaned up. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna I'm gonna spray some degrees on it and just kind of let it soak, and then. Um, that's pretty much uh it's night time at the moment. So I need to go ahead and catch me some sleep. So yeah, I'll get this cleaned up nice and good. I usually uh just take a little brake clean and pretty much just clean it up. A little bit of the rubber, like right there. I may I may um uh, I'll spray some brake clean on it and maybe a little bit of I guess degrees or something, something to kind of keep it wet and slick. And I might take a, a razor blade and kind of just get all that smoothed out. Um, and yep, I dropped my pocket screwdriver here. So here we go. Got that. Pretty much, you're just gonna pick the gasket out like so. And, uh, there you go. That's him, just the oil for thousand gasket. That's the oil cooler gasket. Uh, basically get um, get the filter housing cleaned up. And get them all ready, get them all ready to go back. So let's put this down here for the moment. All right guys, that's it for the night. Uh, so go pick back up with the, uh, put the oil for the housing back together. Then we'll get into the belts and uh, we'll talk about this this belt tension and, and the belts and everything.